My name is Valora Bach and I'm with Sunburn Encounters. Welcome. I want to talk to you today about um, how to walk in family and brotherly love in the ministry, in the church, in the body, um, in a culture that's very sexualized. Um, we've seen examples in ministry of people that um, we respect, people who've truly been changed by God, anointed by God, have the wisdom of God, and have fallen in this area. And it's uh, it's like a nuclear wave that goes out to, to everyone that hears. It's There's fallout, there's damage, and there's insecurity. And one way that we tend to deal with um, damage or potential damage in the church is to make more rules. And that doesn't um, teach us how to walk in the wisdom of the Lord. It just puts boundaries and fences around us. And, um, you know, we've all heard um, the wisdom of the age of Billy Graham was don't even get in the elevator with a woman. Well, women are coming into more freedom in the church just as uh, they were with Jesus when Jesus walked on the earth. And um, you, you can't say that anymore because women are in leadership positions and sometimes we're the one deciding who's going to be in the elevator with us and who isn't. And is it is it really strict boundaries uh, such as I won't get in the car, I won't get in the elevator, or is there more? for the times that you have to, or you're working in leadership positions with the opposite sex, or you're working in a secular job with the opposite sex. Not everybody has the luxury of working and being paid in the ministry. M most of us have jobs in the marketplace and, you know, newsflash, the opposite sex is everywhere. <laughs> um, you know, we're kind of started out even from a young age um, in a so sexualized environment on television, on the radio, in books. If you walk in the mall, um, just Victoria's Secret alone, the ads um, in those windows, sexuality uh, or the opposite sex being sexualized is everywhere. It's part of our culture, and uh, especially for women, if they want to be held in esteem, it's usually, by the opposite sex, it's usually um, related to her visual appearance, her physical appearance. And so little girls are raised this way. Little girls are raised on, um, you know, Disney movies where the the whole point to the movie has to do with romance somewhere along the line. And so for a girl, the opposite sex or um, encounters with the opposite sex are potential romance encounters. And for boys with the things that they see, their father's watching, their big brother's watching, girls are a potential, a p potential sexual encounter. So our eyes, our minds are kind of trained to see the opposite sex in a certain way. And when we come into the kingdom, we receive new filters on everything. We, our, our hearts of stone become hearts of flesh and love is activated. Walls come down as we receive healing and we know the Father loves us. And um, everything is changed. Many of us get free from sexual bondage, from drug addictions, from rage, from control, from fear, from insecurity. But in this area, the church has remained weak. And a lot of it, I believe, stems from bad teaching where women are concerned. And where women aren't liberated there's demonic bondage around our belief systems of women. Um, if you go to a church that has teachings about why healing or the gifts don't happen today, um, you're not going to see healing function in that church. If um, women are not equally a part of 
the body of Christ, then honor and a place of respect is not being offered to women. We're not expecting to see the full measure of Christ manifesting in women, and men are not reacting towards women as a fully activated, fully filled temple of God. And they can be objectified in some ways. And even with Hitler, one of the ways that a slow progression um, for the Jewish people being annihilated, which was his ultimate goal, was a slow progression of dehumanization. And the Bible says that man and woman were both made in his image. But when we say that woman is not um, equal with man, she doesn't walk beside man, she's, she's not as the Holy Spirit is in the in the Trinity with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, because the same word for the Holy Spirit is the same word that was used for the function of women, the paraclete, the helper, um, a powerful force with men. Um, when they're not viewed that way, then there's a dehumanization. And when there's a dehumanization, there's a lot that can be um, justified in the way that we see women, understand women, and function with women. So I think that we're in this amazing age where the body of Christ is being healed up in this way. And um, women are, are coming into a place of ministry that's really bringing life <laughs> into the church in a new way. We bring in um, personality and passion and creativity and nurturing. And th these are all things the church needs along with the, um, the strong leadership and the direction and the protective shepherding force that, and we all, we all intermingle <laughs> in all of these traits, but um, God's really blessing us with the restoration um, in our day. But what I'm, what I'm wanting to get at is as women are being restored, as the eyes and the understanding of the hearts of, of how a woman is created and what she's created for, we, we as individuals need healing and a de-objectification, a, a re-humanization of all of our, our lenses when we look at women, when we watch television, I, I think that there's been so much that's been accepted by the church, and I don't mean this in a legalistic way, but we've uh, accepted and eaten fruit, food from the world um, philosophically, culturally, relationally, that really isn't what we should be eating because our our love of the opposite sex should first be filtered through brotherly love. And I love in Leviticus when the Lord is beginning to lay out who you sleep with and who you don't. He, he talked about, you know, when you get into, you know, being with someone sexually who is in the family or of your blood, he said, this is depraved. And so when he told the church to you know, strip away the the sexual immorality, the fornication, the adultery, the sexual out, sexuality that was around idol worship. Do away with those things. But he said, do not forsake brotherly love. Go after brotherly love. If you if you have a frame for what brotherly love is and what it isn't, brotherly love has so much freedom, but we need to have an understanding, um, a new understanding, I believe, in the church. And just as um, there's, there's an outward focus to our ministry, but God says that it should all be coming out of that time alone, behind the doors, we should have a relationship that's alive with Christ where no one sees so that what is seen as authentic, it is something that's coming from the life of Christ in us. So 
should we, um, with our brothers and sisters, have an internal relationship with the opposite sex behind closed doors where no one sees the things that we read, the things that we watch, the things that we listen to? We should have a, a minuscule uh, um, filter to sift out the philosophies of the world because it does affect how we engage each other in the church, at work, and in, in our families and our friendships. Um, you know, in, in the world, affection in, in movies, as soon as affection begins to be developed, it leads straight to lust and not covenant. And the, the way God created us, He created us in the garden, and right away He created us as sexual beings. But it was two people and two people only who were in that sexual relationship, one man and one woman. They weren't like the animals who um, had many partners, and whatever seed was produced, that was okay. But in Malachi, it talked about the seed that's produced through a man and a woman um, in covenant is holy. God is after that seed. God wants that seed. And it even says in Malachi 2, um, but somewhere between 13 and 16, that the Holy Spirit is even poured out in a measure on a covenant union between a man and a woman. So in the church, marriage is so different than how it is in the body. And it's like we need to really pull away some layers of, of an onion of the world and strip back down our focus and say and realize he gave us um, sexuality on a great level. And he made us fully capable of having that fulfilled in a marriage, in a covenant. And I think right now, because we have so much of the world in us and so many expectations that are unrighteous, and then walls that are built around our expectations when they're not fulfilled, we're not being fulfilled even in the church, in our marriages. So I would like to look at in the next video how to how to go after brotherly love in the church and how to go after being satisfied in our marriages.